everybody, Rachel here from RachelTheStamper.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous card. I actually uh, got this idea from Dawn Griffith. She did a different card with this. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using an emboss resist technique using the Champagne Mist. So this is the Champagne Mist Shimmer Paint. You could also use the frost white if you wanted to shimmer paint. Um, we also have a copper and I'm waiting for a gold to come in. Um, she did a really, really lovely card, but I'm going to use uh, the champagne mist and we're going to use the sea of texture stamp set. So this is a version that I did with Calypso Coral, which I thought was really, really pretty. And my little ribbon moved over because I added this after the fact. <laughs> and then when we made our club class uh, card last week, I added this underneath instead. And we changed it to Bermuda Bay. I'm sorry, not Bermuda Bay, Coastal Cabana. The color I've been waiting to come back forever. And now I can't even call it the right thing. But what we did was we used both of, um, we did both of these. And we're going to make this version today, the Coastal Cabana. Again, this uses the Sea of Texture stamp set. So we're going to get out the net and we're going to get out the small coral and the large coral. But you could absolutely change this around to anything that you wanted to do. Um, I'm going to also get out the little um, vine of seaweed. And we're going to use that for something as, as well. Just adding a little bit of something extra to the inside. So for this card today, what you're going to need is a card base. Again, this is Calypso Coral. This is 5.5 by 8.5. Score it 4 and a quarter. You're going to need a sheet of Whisper White for the under layer. This is 4 by 5 and a quarter. And then I have a layer of Champagne Foil cardstock. And I have a layer of Glossy White cardstock. And I do apologize. I forgot the sizes of these. All of these measurements will be on the blog. So the Whisp I'm sorry, the Glossy cardstock is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay, so that's glossy white, so you can see it's shiny. And then the champagne will be two and a half by four and a half. So those are going to layer together really nicely on there. So I'm going to tell you, we have to do a little bit of stuff ahead of time because we do need to let these dry. Okay, that is one of the most important things is that you need to let the shimmer paint dry before you move on. Or you won't get quite as nice of a... Um, a coating over it if that makes sense it won't resist as well so it's much better if it's actually fully dry so what I have started doing is I do have a lot of my um my sponge daubers I have them labeled I just have like a little label maker that I use and generally I do clean these out every single time after I use them and I even have found that when I do use the shimmer paint as long as you rinse it it does come out pretty clean but if it bothers you that there's a chance you could get a little bit of the shimmer or the glitter then what you might want to do is just keep one kind of right on top so I'll keep these together just like that so I have a separate one so you want to make sure with the shimmer paint regardless of what you're using it for that you get it a really good shake and I'll just get out a couple blocks here okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my coral onto a block and another thing that you want to keep in mind I'm not going to um do this right now but it definitely is super duper helpful you want to use your scrub okay this is a really old stamp and scrub I do have another one but you want to use your scrub when you clean the shimmer paint off of this because when you use your chamois or if you just kind of wipe it off with a baby wipe it doesn't get it off however if you spray your um your stamp and scrub with the mist so you're just going to shake it up spray this with the mist and then when we're finished, clean it off. It really gets it super clean because it kind of the glitter kind of clings to this. Now you will need to clean this a little more often, but if you've been using your Simply Chamois, maybe you haven't used this quite as much. But you definitely want to use this for the shimmer paint because it helps to keep it cleaner. So let me show you. We're gonna again, I'm gonna just make sure this is really shaken up. And then I'm gonna put, and this is a tip that is much more useful if you're using either the copper or the gold because these can be a little bit overwhelming. But what I do is I take my sponge dauber and I dip it into the lid here. And then you can either use this to spread it out. So if you were to have copper, what you wanna do is kind of spread this here just to get a little bit more of the color off so it kind of makes it lighter. And then you're gonna just put this, sponge this onto your stamp with the sponge dauber. Okay, and then we're going to take, this is our glossy cardstock, we're going to stamp this. You do want to make sure when you have glossy cardstock, it is very slippery. So you want to make sure that you're very intentional with your up and down movement. So I'm just adding more paint 
same thing again, just adding more paint for my sponge dauber, just moving the image around a little bit. Add this up at the top just to fill in. Just take a little bit more off of there. Fill it. And if for some reason you don't have enough and you go back in and dip, or say for some reason you don't have enough in your lid, put your lid on and shake it again. It'll just kind of refill the lid for you so you can use it again. But it also just helps to redistribute the um, the shimmer in the paint. All right, so I think that looks nice enough. So what I'm going to do is you can clean this off just with um, like a paper towel or something. So I'm going to just use my auto shop rag just to clean that off. But this does need to dry. So I'm going to set this over here and close this up nice and tightly. I've got it on my finger. And then... I'm just gonna clean my stamp off a little bit just so you guys can see. So if you really move that around in the wet spot, it completely will clean it. So then we'll just put this on the dry side and you can see it's really, really clean. And if you don't use this, um, a lot of times you will find that you'll have residual shimmer paint stuck onto your block, which is pretty, except if you don't want your next card to be shimmery, then you're kind of stuck. All right, so. While we're letting this continue to dry, we're gonna go ahead and stamp. And I, I'm gonna actually just take my uh, towel here and just wipe off the edge of this so I don't continue to get shimmer paint on everything. And once again, you can just run this underwater just to rinse it out. That's what I usually do with all of my sponge daubers anyway. So I have the netting here, and I have that little tiny uh, coral piece. I have my words, which we're gonna, I forgot to grab something for that. And I have my little um, seaweed trail. So we're gonna go ahead in the meantime and stamp our background piece. So I'm gonna use crumb cake for the net. And if you want this a little lighter, you can always stamp off first Put it on this side. So I'm gonna just stamp, turn it, stamp again. I turn it just that way you don't get the exact same pattern over and over again, but you can do it whatever way you'd like. So that's enough of those. I'm gonna leave my crumb cake because we're gonna stamp the sentiment in that as well. Then I have my Coastal Cabana and I'm gonna use the small coral and just stamp that in a couple spots. As you can see, you are going to cover up a significant amount of this. So you don't have to really hit the middle if you don't want to, but I kind of always fill in the spots anyway because I'm never really quite sure where I'm going to put it if I'm going to decide to stamp it off to the side or something. I know that's going to get covered, so I just want to have a, a lighter version. Same thing again. I'm going to cover that spot up, so that's going to kind of be my stamping off area. Okay, and then what we can do, I'm going to move this over just for a second. So this is our card base. Now you could put in a white panel in here if you'd like, but it is a pretty light color. So if you're writing in a black pen or a dark blue pen, you should be fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add the seaweed trail to the inside of the card here, just in a few spots. Some without stamping, some with stamping. I should say without re-inking, not without stamping. How can you make a card without stamping, Rachel? There we go. Okay, so just to give a little bit of a visual interest to the bottom. All right, and so that was in Coastal Cabana. So we just have one more thing we're gonna do. And what I did was I actually did, um, I did these with some scraps and that was kind of the easiest way to do it. So when I trim out my cardstock. I always end up with a lot of little pieces. As you guys have seen these before, I have like these little strips. But occasionally I'll have like a fatter piece depending on what I'm trimming. So I'm gonna get a piece of uh, Whisper White. I'm not really exactly sure how big you need it to be, but just a big enough piece that you can trim it down if you want to. And then I also am gonna grab kind of a similar size. This is just a piece of um, crumb cake scrap. So kind of same thing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp our sentiment. Just wanna grab a smaller block. We're gonna stamp our sentiment in crumb cake. 
Okay, it doesn't have to be exact because we are going to punch it out. So we're going to stamp that. And then what we're going to grab is the Everyday Label Punch. So if you don't want to use this as a full label, the other thing that you can do, and we're going to need a little finagling for this because I could have, probably should have cut it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to just go ahead and just trim this down just a hair so it's a little bit thinner. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and we're going to actually feed this in to our stamp, or our punch, I should say, and kind of eyeball where we want it and round the edge. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Round the edge. Okay, so then we have a little rounded piece. Kind of reminds me of that word window punch. Now, obviously, this piece is a little bit bigger than we need, so I'm going to do my best to just kind of hand trim this a little smaller. Okay, and I'm going to cut off a smaller piece. Let's see if that looks remotely, slightly straight. Okay, so then I'm going to do the same thing, except this time I'm going to feed it in. I'm going to have a little bit bigger of a piece. So I'm feeding this in between those layers there, if you guys can see that. And then I'm kind of just slightly gripping it just to hold it in place while I kind of eyeball how, how I want it. So I just have it just slightly pressed. And then I'm going to pop it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I got that in there, kind of eyeballing to make sure it's pretty much straight. And pop it. And then I have this nice little layer that I can put this on. So I'm going to just grab a little of that liquid glue and add this on and I got I have to say I am really very thankful that uh I saw this embossed resist I'm sure not this embossed resist the shimmer paint resist because it's another really cool way to be able to use your shimmer paint also to be able to use your glossy cardstock so that's pretty cool as well all right so let me move all these scraps over and we will finish up this should be nice and dry by now. If not, you can always hit it with your heat tool a little bit, but you do want to be sure that you're careful because with the glossy paper, it can um, melt it a little bit. So you want to kind of be super careful when you're doing that. So what I'm going to do is I have my scrap of paper here. As you can see, these are the ones that I did the other day. So I have my scrap of paper and I have my sponge brayer okay so I'm going to grab my coastal cabana ink and one thing you want to make sure you do with this as we talked about this the other day with your brayer you want to roll all the way that way you don't end up going back and forth like this and then you'll just have a line of color there so you want to roll all the way and when you roll your brayer with your paper you want to start rolling off and all the way so kind of start way off the paper and end off the paper okay and if you do this enough I know right now there are lines start from different directions as well it will cover up all the lines and you'll get a nice uniform color and the ironic thing is the more that you brayer actually makes these appear a little bit more okay and the other reason that you do want to make sure that you really wait for this to be dry, because when we did this the other day, I didn't wait quite as long. And I got a little bit of shimmer paint onto my um, Coastal Cabana pad. Not that it affects it in what, you know, any way whatsoever, but I know sometimes some people might be a little upset if they get a little bit too much shimmer paint onto that. Now, here it is. I was going to say, naturally, I can't find my paper towel. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to just take a paper towel and just wipe. And what that will do is kind of make the... Um, make the coral pop a little bit more and I'm going to go over the edge because I didn't get the edge of this quite enough on the ends there. Okay and you can do this as much as little as you like so just rub your paper towel over just like that. Such a beautiful piece. Okay so let me scoot these out of the way and we will finish up with our card here. So um, another tip really have a hard time if you're using snail 
or fast fuse to get that to actually stick to the foil paper. So you don't really want to use these on foil paper because what you'll find is you'll be rolling. There'll be very, very little amount of fast fuse or snail on here and you're kind of going through your roll, but you're not using anything. So again, I will stick with the uh, Tombow liquid glue. I'm going to put this onto the back of the uh, resist paper that we created instead of putting it onto the foil. Okay. And then you're going to flip this over and lay that right onto it. Kind of give you a little mat on the edge there. So hold that down for just a second and give it a little press. If you're worried about it being longer, you could also stick your blocks on there while you're letting this um, dry. So that's another idea as well. And then what we're going to do before we finish putting our card together is we're going to put, I think I might have cut this just a hair off, but that's okay. We're going to actually wrap this with that uh, really pretty ribbon. So you could use either one. Um, we do have, these are the tea room ribbons, so they do come with two. This one is more of a Bermuda Bay, and there also is one with a white, and they both have a copper outline. They're both very, very pretty. Um, I'm going to stick with the Whisper White, or the white and copper version, I should say. Hopefully I have enough to get around that. That's another one I need to order. That was a really great uh, ribbon because of the copper lining, and everybody loves that copper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my panel here and I'm going to wrap this around just like so and let me think how did I do this before because I, I had one where I did a, um, a knot and then I had one where I did a bow but I think I'm going to just do a knot because I don't have quite enough ribbon here so I don't want to end up having a knot not nice knot so I put my thumb down when I secured it and then just tied the knot just like that. And then you can once again just take your paper snips. Hopefully these are the ones that are in the better mood of cutting. Nope. <laughs> and give it a little trim just like that. Okay. So I probably have enough to make one card and then that's it. So I need to order some more of that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just slide this around. If you like it more near the bottom, you could put it at the bottom. You could um, secure this with a mini glue dot if you wanted to, but you don't have to. So I'm going to go ahead one more time with my Tombow liquid glue. Add this to my base. And got a little crazy there. Put this down. Okay, give that a nice press. And I'm gonna have to trim just this little layer off. I must have either over, over folded or undercut this piece. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put some of this onto the back of my foil paper. I'm trying to use this one to the bitter end. I have a brand new one, but I'm trying to get this till it runs out. And then I'm gonna lay this onto this panel right here, just like that. Again, if you want to, you can put some blocks to hold it down. And then since I don't know exactly where I wanna put this, I'm definitely gonna put the Tombow. Tombow, that way if I need to move it around a little bit, I can. Tombow, ooh, sorry. <laughs> That's the Halloween version, Tombow liquid glue. So you can put this at the top, we can put it at the bottom. I'm gonna kind of cover up over these couple corals right here. And again, this with the glossy paper, it will slide around a little bit. So just make sure you like it and there you go, there you have it. So once again, these uh, two were using uh, Coastal Cabana. As you can see, this one is significantly lighter. I was just much lighter with my brayer, just depends on what you wanna do. And then we have another version here and this one was done with Calypso Coral. So tell me which one is your favorite. I think also this with adding the little bell with the top was really pretty, but very, very simple card. Really not a lot of um, time or effort into it because all you're gonna do is stamp your uh, little pieces, let them dry. This one I did not let dry as much and you can see that it's got a lot more um, of the silver kind of stuck. I think when I pushed it went one way or the other. So you definitely want to let this dry because then you're going to get a nicer resist effect with it. But beautiful cards. I will put all the measurements for all of these cards on the blog. You can find them at rachethestamper.com and you can also shop for all the products that I use to make this. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you know how to find me, rachethestamper at gmail.com. Bye.